Quick little martial sciences breakdown for everybody. I just finished watching the pay-per-view for UFC 254. I'm just going to break down the main event, Habib Nurmagomedov versus Justin Gaethje, Muslim Dagestani Russian versus Catholic Mexican American or Chicano if you want. Justin Gaethje had 22 victories before this and a couple of losses. Habib Nurmagomedov had 28 wins before this. Now it's 29. Spoiler alert. Habib Nurmagomedov uh, Habib, let me just say, won an incredible fight, and I think he did a number of things really well. Uh, he retired from the sport, so obviously we should not expect him back again. He's a man of his word, and he said he, he had a word with his mother regarding his father not being in his camp, his father passing away. I believe it was partial COVID complications, but I don't know the actual full story of his demise earlier this year, is falling asleep. And so Habib versus Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje is usually a pressure fighter. So is Habib Nurmagomedov. Uh, Habib. Uh, Justin Gaethje is a pressure fighter with striking who uses his grappling, which is all American wrestling, mainly for defense. Habib uses his grappling for offense so he can take every one of his opponents to the ground and maul them, just waylay them, make them feel like they're not fit to be in the same cage or even arena as him. So Justin Gaethje changed his plan. Trevor Whitman is a phenomenal coach. And so their plan was instead of charging, which would likely get him flat on his back, even with his great All-American wrestling, uh, let's strike from a distance. And doing a, th a few kind of wild punches and hooks uh, seems less precise actually in punching maybe because he's running backwards instead of forward and he's used to running forward while while being more precise in his punches but he's kind of piecing habib up in the first round with his feet but the first round ends with habib finally getting a hold of him getting his mitts on him and taking him down and that's why it shows you the bullshitness of, of rounds if rounds didn't exist which are artificial props uh, for strikers then habib would have finished him even earlier but the second round comes around and habib is hurt habib is hurt in his leg he's getting hit pretty hard but at one point when justin hits him really hard early in the second round habib turns it into a takedown justin tries to get out of it but habib is savvy takes his back then he gets mount because justin doesn't want to get strangled just like dustin poirier was strangled by habib just like conor mcgregor was strangled by habib so now he's mounted from mount habib does something unexpected we've always seen habib on top we've always seen him just destroying people from on top he does something that i do in practice sometimes for fun but which is very risky he puts uh justin in a triangle and willingly lets Justin put him on his back. So then he goes on his back, but he secures the triangle. At this point, the smartest thing for Justin Gaethje to do is to try to fight the triangle while they're on the ground. Instead, he does the classic mistake, although he's very wrestling heavy, and a lot of wrestlers who have less jujitsu knowledge do this. He tries to lift them up and slam him. As soon as he does it, I don't know if you've seen a lot of Dana Hare videos, but John Dana Hare teaches you swoop your right arm or your left, whatever is the, the kind of the opposite. Um, so his right leg is here. His left leg is the one swinging over. So if you have it, your left hand on top of the head, you use your right hand. If you have your right hand on top of your head, you use your left hand and you sneak it around their leg, which prevents the slam from happening. At that point, I knew that the match was over. Uh, the the slam fails and he gently puts Habib down. He pauses for a second. He taps about three different times before the ref, Jason Herzog, realizes that he's out. By that point, you know, he's out. Habib lets go. He's very emotional. Um, he basically does a triangle strangle submission from his back initiated from the mount which is incredible. I don't think we've ever seen Habib on his back, but this time he wasn't forced to his back. He chose to go to his back and finish from his back just to show the diversity of his submission techniques. And he started off you know, the fight on, on his feet, as all fights do in the UFC. And so he showed that he was competent in the striking, even if people could argue he was losing the striking. He was threatening constantly with his his grappling, or at least the potential grappling that he could do. I think the technical takedowns in the first round may have been only one or two. And so we got to see a totally different Khabib dominant and you know didn't even have to go to the championship rounds, which are usually rounds four and five. Finished it in the second round. Absolutely beautiful. Retires from the sport. 
un, you know, barring they try to bring back that cursed fight with Tony Ferguson or a GSP call out, I don't think we're going to see Khabib. And if Khabib is really a man of his word, we're never going to see him again. Congratulations to Khabib Nur Nurmagomedov. I have trouble with that last name, sorry. And the incredible triangulo or triangle choke, triangle strangle off the back initiated from the mount after a takedown from Justin Gaethje, who was atypically running away from Khabib the entire match. Props to Justin Gaethje. He woke up uh, a little bit after and said, I had him hurt, I had him hurt, but I got strangled, and I love the excitement. He said he's got about five more wars in him, and he doesn't consider being strangled uh, unconscious or rendered unconscious as a war. So he says he's got five more wars, which probably means five matches of uh, five rounds of striking or standing and banging. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the analysis.